In topic three, we will look at asymptotic concepts that are used in analysis. This particular podcast is on asymptotic notations, notations that are used to express the growth rate of functions, capturing the runtime or space use or other aspects of algorithms. Each of my podcast topics starts with a photograph I've taken somewhere in the Hawaiian Island chain. This is taken at Fern Island in the French frigate Shoals. This is an albatross which was born on this island and has never flown before and it is stretching its wings getting ready for its first flight. I think that represents us being ready to get to have our first flight in analysis. Uh, once that bird takes off it may not land for years until it's ready to, to breed. Okay let's go into um, asymptotic notations. To get us started, when we do asymptotic analysis, we need to ask three questions. First, what do we want to measure about our algorithm? Do we want to measure time, space, communication done through I.O.? Do we care about the best case, the average case, or the worst case? Next, we need to identify a function that characterizes the thing we want to measure, a mathematical function, and that is much of the work of analysis, and then we need to classify that function in terms of its complexity, major concept of this course. Uh, complexity is defined in terms of bounds on growth rate. For example, the runtime of the algorithm will be no worse or no better than a certain function's growth rate. These bounds are expressed using asymptotic notations. We can make an analogy between these notations and ordinary arithmetic equality and inequality relations. So just a quick preview, we're going to study something called big O, which is sort of like, this is just an analogy, less than or equal to. Uh, we're going to have omega, which is analogous to greater than or equal to. Theta, which is kind of like equality. Little o, which is analogous to less than, and little omega, which is analogous to greater than. Let's start, uh, look at them in these orders. Um, we're going to look at big O first, one of the most commonly used uh, asymptotic notations in, in analysis. Often what we care about in analysis is how bad can it get? We want to guarantee that a given algorithm will complete within a reasonable amount of time. So we want to know the worst it can be to give us an upper bound an upper bound on the runtime of an algorithm. So this is what we use big O for because it gives an upper bound on growth rate. Remember it was analogous to uh, less than or equal to. So we're going to say well the growth rate is less than or equal to this function and that will, that will tell us it's not going to get any worse than this function. Now big O is defined formally using set notation because these notations are actually sets, even though we're going to treat them more algebraically. So it's defined to be the set, big O of some function, g of n. You know, g of n can be n squared or, or 2 to the n, for example. is defined to be the set of all functions that meet this condition. This dot dot means um, such that. Such that there exists, that's shorthand for there exists, positive constants C and N naught such that we're going to start abbreviating here this is true for all N greater than equals N naught let me explain big O of G of N is a set of functions those functions such that you can find some constants where this expression is true for all n greater than some initial n. So essentially this is saying if the function here is bounded above by our reference function, the one that's in the big O, uh, times some constant uh, once you get above a certain n, then f belongs in this set. So here's a diagrammatic representation of this situation. Here's a, a, a graph, 
and uh, let's say n is growing that way and the functions are, are growing on the vertical axis. Um, the vertical axis might be measuring, for example, time, but then we might have a function um, c g of n and we're asking whether f of n belongs in this set. Let's draw that with a different color. Suppose f sort of looks like this. And so what we're concerned with is that although f may sometimes be greater than c of n, at some point, after some point, which we will mark here as right here, this is where um, n naught or n sub zero is after that point f of n will always be smaller than g of n it will be bounded from above so we can prove thing we can prove facts like this we can write a function f of n that expresses the runtime of our algorithm and then we can pick some g of n that we think it belongs in the category of and then we can use this definition to, to show that it's in the category now strictly speaking this is a set and it is a statement about functions. We do what the book calls a, an abuse of notation in a couple of ways. One is, although we should write, say, f of n is a member of big O of g of n, because this is a set, we should use membership. <clears throat> but what we, uh, well, an example, let me give an example of that. You know, we, we can write uh, n is a member of big O of n squared because n is always bounded above by n squared. Of course, it's more informative to say, well, n is a member of big O of n, because that's a tighter bound. Often we write this a little bit differently in terms of truth, note, truth conditions. We might, say, we might say f of n is big O of g of n if and only if, that's what IFF stands for, there exists, again, the positive constant C and not uh, such that um, 0 F of N is less than some constant times G of N for all N greater or equals N not. So this is written out in terms of what you would reason about the test or sh you know, show that F of N is a member of this set. And again, we're writing it using the equality notation instead of the member notation for reasons that will become clearer later. Okay, let's look at a quick example here. I've uh, rewritten the second version of the definition that we use to show that a function is a member of set big O of g of n. A very simple example might be to show um, that 2n squared is big O of n squared. Strictly speaking, 2n squared is always bigger than n squared, but this isn't the function n squared. This is the set of functions that meet this definition above, where we're allowed to insert a constant to adjust for this thing. So this is how we're going to get rid of constant and lower order variations in function growth that don't matter so much. This is playing the role of f of n, and uh, n squared is playing the role of g of n. So don't be intimidated by these problems. All you do is you just look at the definition, write it out, you know, plugging in f of n and g of n into the definition, and then it becomes more concrete and something you can work with. So here, we just write that out. Zero, this is what we need to show. f of n is 2n squared. c g of n squared. So that's c n squared. This is a part that students often forget. They often show it just for one example. You have to show it for all n greater than some n naught. So this works with, let's, let's just set c equals 2. Then this term over here becomes 2n squared. So this trivially works because then the f and g terms are equivalent for all n greater than n naught, where I'm going to set n naught equal 0. Okay, of course there's more complex cases, and I'll show more complex examples when we get to beta a little bit further down. I just wanted to start with the most simple example. Let's look at a couple of examples of functions that are in the set big O of n squared. These are in. Of course, n squared is a big O of n squared. As it turns out, n squared 
plus anything involving a lower order power of n. If you say 1,000 n, it looks like, wow, that's big. That's got to be bigger than n squared. But you can actually find a constant that will make this term overwhelm the 1,000 n. So this is actually in big O of n squared. In fact, even this can be shown to be in big O of n squared. Anything with an exponent smaller than 2 is in big O of n squared. And of course, since it's uh, an inequality, essentially, much, smaller, much slower growing functions are also in there. Examples that are not in big O of n squared would include n cubed. In fact, anything with an exponent slightly larger than 2, or with other terms that also grow within other uh, factors, such as n squared log n. Okay, we're going to stop this podcast there so we can break it up a bit. In the next podcast, we will look at mega and theta.